going by the Consumer Price Index report released by the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria's inflation rate changed direction in February as it rose 15.7% uh, from 15.6% uh, uh, from the previous month. This represents a 0.1% point increase compared to the rate recorded in January uh, earlier this year. According to MBS, the uptrend in Nigeria's inflation rate is attributed to the increase in the price of goods and services following the fuel scarcity across the country in February. Well, that's what we'll be looking at now and seeing how does this affect you and the impact this will have. Well, we're going to be talking to a regular analyst now, but just to let you know that status has changed, Mr. Uh, Olusha Sankwadi. Uh, is a chartered accountant, but now, of course, newly elected as the 35th chairman of Ikeja District Society of Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. Uh, congratulations to you. Let me start from there. <laughs> Good morning, Frank, and uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, for your support. Uh, how, does it feel, how does it feel to, <laughs> I mean, with this new status of yours? Yeah, well, uh, it calls for more service, uh, more task on our path to make mm. sure that we are able to raise the bar right. from where our predecessors are based and also to impact our members and give them, you know, more leverage to the new things that are happening right. in the accountancy profession. Mm -hmm. And definitely we know we have the support of Fibrant TV. Uh, definitely, certainly. <laughs> and, and, and that means more money. Uh, more money. Well, it's a, a service to, a service <laughs> to the institute <laughs> and uh, we definitely contribute more. It's even right. to Let, let's uh, head straight to what we're looking at. Uh, looking at the fact that the, the food inflation rate, which is um, closely monitored, uh, drop a bit in the month of uh, February, that's year on year. However, on a month-on-month -month basis, it has increased. So it, has, it means that it has not really changed that much. So how do, we, um, how do you respond to, to this latest report and what does this mean for the economy? Yeah, uh, sincerely speaking, to the handlers of our economy, this is not the best of time uh, for them, although we we'll still attribute some of these issues to their past uh, failure. If you look at the preamble that you gave on some of the fundamental reason for the increase in fl inflation uh, from January to February, uh, it's written 0.1%, but it's mm. huge. You consider the impact of fuel on us. Initially, before the crisis between Russia and Ukraine we were battling, you know, locally right. uh, the issue of fuel problem. Uh, remember in January we had the issue of treated fuel in the system. Even before then, it has been one crisis or the other when it comes to fuel. And uh, you ask yourself the question, we have the crude oil, which is the main thing that produces this oil, but we still suffer. Uh, if you look at the budget that was projected by the uh, federal government for this year, the benchmark for the budget was about $65 uh, dollar per barrel. And I'm sure you know what it goes for now in the right. market. It's about $130 dollar per barrel, which we should consider a time of celebration, a time we've never added this high. Uh, the last we had was during uh, Jonathan when we were talking about 96 uh, the dollar per barrel of that fuel, but now we have at 130. But we are still being imperfect. We are still having problem. Inflation keeps increasing because what we are supposed to do is not being done by the government, and they quite disheartening because uh, part of the promises this administration gave us was to take us out of poverty. With mm. one of the cardinal point of saying we're going to fix the refinery which you believe are the bedrock of our economy. Because <laughs> part of the things that assist or aid uh, inflation to reduce is economic diversification. But are we diversified? The answer is no. We still concentrate at least over 75% of our major income still come from crude. And uh, right. we cannot benchmark ourselves to say, now that the increase in crude is going up, our people should be suffering. If we have done what is needful, and what is that? Fixing our refinery. Be because, let me quickly come because I was going to ask you, I mean, how do you reconcile the fact that the price of crude is 
up in the international market, although it barely started dropping uh, since the beginning of this week. But there has risen to around 120, 130 uh, dollars as at last week yeah. on the back of Ukraine, Ukraine crisis. But then the government is attributing the fact that there was few crisis, um, full scarcity uh, in February. And so how do we reconcile and how do we manage this situation? Uh, the price of crude is up in the international market, yet we're having a scarcity. This is like a two uh, on parallel uh, lines. Yeah, the situation is quite simple. If the, if the government have the political will and sincerity on their path to make sure that our refinery works, I think uh, an average Nigerian, rather considering saying we don't have so much on our path, will be lifted out of poverty without thinking. Imagine the crisis, uh, like, like I always say, uh, for every crisis there is always an opportunity. If we are on the path of having some of our refinery working and we have stable uh, security in the, in, in the country, some of us will continue to pray that the problem in Ukraine and Russia should continue. Because what does that connote? People are looking for alternative to Russia supplying them crude and uh, fuel and Ukraine while they're battling their issue. You know the normal thing. Somebody look elsewhere. And you might be fortunate when they put it and say, ah, let's consider these less privileged countries, the OPEC, Nigeria, and let's see what they can do. You might discover that your products will now come to bear that even when the other party settles their fry, you're already taking a chunk of what uh, of that particular market and you can make money for yourself. But the problem there is we'll take the crude, export it out, we'll get the uh, finished product. Why some of the byproduct that we even get from this thing are used by those other countries? Imagine when I heard about a Dangote refinery of so much they are doing with fertilizer. You know, even from the crude, we get fertilizer from it. That will enhance and, uh, you know, put more, 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 more stuff into the agricultural sector. Mm. Because when you now refine those things and you produce fertilizer yourself, right. that's enough to encourage the farmers. So there will be food surplus. In yes, the right. land, so, but because we lack this futuristic planning, as you know, committed by our leaders, we we'll found ourselves here. And uh, I don't know, I don't know. It mm -hmm. seems it will, it will get worse uh, than the, where we see it now. We just hope that things get better in the coming days. Well, the, the MBS is also um, attributing the fact that this inflation it um, hang around, uh, hung around uh, the prices of food services and all of that and they mentioned the fact that the, the price of siri went up the f price of um, yantuba went up and some of these commodities uh, as well yes the question we know we keep talking about this we'll talk about this over and over again how the government should uh, create a kind of palliative measures or the immediate to cushion the effect at the moment so you also talked about the fact that 0.1% uh, is huge as well. Of course. So where should we channel this book of conversation to? Yeah, in well, terms of addressing the continuous rise in inflation. Yeah, we, we will channel it to no other person than the government. And one, what are the things that is expected of them to do to create an enabling environment for an average businessman to succeed? Let me put a practical thing. Why goods and services in the last uh, few months has skyrocketed? It's not. It's no news again. When you hear the cost of diesel, we've had uh, there is power crisis. Unfortunately, that is a sector I major in, <laughs> but uh, we've been having a series of issues. Uh, we've not been able to increase our generation rates. That is a problem on its own. And you know, power plays a strategic role for every businessman. Like this, he offers. <laughs> if you, you know the number, the amount of diesel, liters of diesel you run on daily basis to sustain this 24 seven. Imagine if that has to be on the path of power. Even if you are paying that to the power, the uh, uh, distribution company, right. it's, it's huge savings. As we speak, the cost of diesel is, is, is as much as uh, 700 naira per liter. Two weeks ago, I bought it for six, six for the seven. And where does that go? It goes into the operating cost. You need to transfer such cost to the end user, which are the consumer. They have to pay for it. 
And you ask yourself the question, as our purchasing power increased, the answer is no. We are yet to get ourselves right from the time of COVID. So many people have lost their job. The level of un unemployment, as we speak, is, is beyond what, and, and that's why you see the uh, vices coming up here and there. So the solution I feel the government need to tackle, it's create an enabling environment, make every business grow. You can imagine if you are getting diesel at uh, 100 Naira. We know, before now, we used to have it for 190, 200. Now you are talking of 400% increase on it. Don't let's go to the aviation. Where you gone at those days in the morning, I can, I can take the first flight for a meeting in Abuja and come back. But thank God for COVID. Rather than making some of those expenses now, you go all the route of saying you want to have a Zoom meeting and some other things. So government should be intentional of making available infrastructure, good business climate, good policies that will enhance business growth. When a business grows, you'll be able mm. to close the gap of unemployment right. and you'll be able, you can imagine the taxes that we'll get when people start working. But when people are not working, on what are you going to tax? When companies are making losses, because I can imagine the loss that so many companies will record during this period that the diesel has increased, is going to increase the operating cost, which on the long run, the profit that you are going to tax will be so minimal. So on the other hand, the government is actually shooting itself on the left by not getting necessary revenue that will enhance the growth of the company. So government should be sincere, intentional, Focus in making sure that the business climate is conducive for an average person. Let, let's uh, narrow down this conversation to the state. Uh, a report shows that uh, food inflation in some of the state, as uh, Kogi, Enugu, you have Kwara State, Sakoto, and Bauchi. And uh, uh, it, these are some of the states that we expect that we should have food cheap, I mean, get food uh, mm -hmm. at a cheaper price. Yeah. But you know, the, the, the case is, I mean, here, it's not the case here. So, for instance, Kogi State, you have about 21.04% for food inflation alone in the month of February. And coming behind Kogi State, you have Ednugu with 20.31% and Kwara with 20. These are states that we all know that they should ordinarily. Um, they have farms, they operate, there are farms in this state, and then food should be cheaper. What do you think is responsible here? Yeah, it, it's uh, there. There are two key things to it. Uh, the first of it is uh, about the insecurity that we've inherited. Uh, people can claim that it's gradually coming down uh, from what we used to have before. And when you look at some of those states, basically they are known for agricultural improvement and uh, civil servant state. But uh, we expect this to happen because the current year we are. Mm -hmm. uh, we know there won't be anything called governance. During the election preparation period, uh, we lose focus of governance. People run after how do I make uh, the next uh, uh, election. You know, the governor of uh, one of the states right. is uh, actually thinking of uh, presidential ambition. The other ones are looking at how do I get re-elected back into some of this. So that will take governance out of it. And that's what we've said. At any time we have this kind of uh, uh, preparation towards election, can we have uh, some of those leaders step down, face the election, let governance continue? Because the, the lacuna we are creating now, even when they restored you or they re-elected you as the governor, you're going to bet it because you would have created the gap. And that will be part of the problem you'll be solving as you're coming in. So it's about government being intentional about it. As we speak, majority of the states lacks governance. Everything we're talking about is politicking. How do we do the next election? Who, are, who comes in and everything? So it's, it's actually a problem to an average person. We are all feeling the bite. We are all feeling because if the states that you are supposed to pump in funds for agriculture is being used to see how you manage election. And you know the way our election goes by in this country. It's, it's backed with so much of funds. Mm -hmm. you, you, you look at those areas. So you don't, we don't expect anything uh, uh, positive during this period. Rather... We expect the, the government 
to trust, even at the federal level, how many of uh, 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 work are we saying? It's more about crisis here, crisis there, and people looking to find a central uh, focal point for them to settle down. So it's something that's quite disheartening, but we have to live by it. It's just that the pity of uh, on an average businessman who has invested a lot, and that's why you see crisis on the path of CBN, or people being unable to repay back some of this loan, and that still trickle back to uh, the challenges that CBN will be facing. Because if the business atmosphere is clear and good, and you grow your business, even if you have secured a loan. To do that, you will be able to generate more, pay, right. take a lot, and the CBN will be able to gain a lot from the interest rate. But mm -hmm. what do we see? So many loans are turning bad, and the people are unable to pay because mm -hmm. the policies, the, the the business climate, is really not encouraging for an average businessman currently, as we speak. How much do you think the country stand to lose the fact that we uh, play po uh, politics at the expense of uh, ensuring that? Um, the, we create a very friendly uh, business environment, like you just said, and talking about food as well to make food the supply chain addressing the the lack of uh, the lack of uh, uh, sufficiency of food. So, how much do we stand to to lose? Uh, At least this is a pre-election. Election is just next year here. I, I, it's difficult for me to place value. When you place value in terms of monetary terms, it's huge. But you talked about the vices that comes with it. You and I understand the level at which ritual killings, people kidnapping, and all those other uh, crime that is is un, un, unattainable are pervading. What value do you want to place to that? If you are talking of the monetary losses that the businesses will, you know, especially put, with the implications and consequences of this. So you, it, it it even contributes more to insecurity. Kidnapping, you go out to make so much money, you cannot drive around, you know, with your eyes, you know, closed and you sleep. You are driving with your driver with your eyes open in case of anything. You can imagine somebody who is tensed. How do you concentrate and think through to have better development? So placing value on it is, is, is huge. And that's why we keep saying at a time of uh, uh, election nearing like this, there should be uh, uh, a, a kind of cushion effect. Possibly the leaders will kind of set aside, fade the, uh, uh, govern, uh, the election process, leave the governance for those period. If it's going to be six months, eight months, in the hands of the people who are not actually, you know, bring, coming out for on the part of politics, maybe some of the SSG and some of those things, so that the lacuna will not be felt by an average person. As we speak, the economy is hard. The average citizen is not enjoying the dividend of democracy, and this on daily basis keep increasing level of insecurity. And in an environment that is not secure, it's difficult for you to grow your business locally. It's difficult for you to have foreign direct investment. Mm. And when those things are not playing right in the right proportion, then definitely you will mm. not have any growth. Let, let's wrap up with this, uh, with this before we, we, we leave. Um, the World Bank has projected that Nigeria's inflation rate will be high, um, much more than any other countries in the world globally. And, and so it, it means that we probably may not be able to control how inflation goes. But however, what other people or some people are saying is that we need to increase or boost the, um, the earning power of average Nigerian, maybe by boosting their take home, pay, the minimum wage, and all of that. So how do we ensure that place is at, at that particular area is addressed in terms of earning power of the average Nigerian? I think where we need to start from is to look for a way to domesticate some of the things we are doing. We are too import-based, and I think that's part of the driver, uh, what bank is looking at. A country that does not produce anything locally mm. uh, tends to nosedive in no distance time. Because you'll be dependent on all those countries where you're getting some of these products from. So I think the first step the government need to take is how do we domesticate some of the uh, our production to increase that level? If you're able to increase your production locally, 
maybe uh, those things that we import, the clothes, the crude oil, the furnitures, the electronics, we are able to produce them, even to the level of automobiles. Remember those days when we have the likes of Peugeot and some other company coming here? The market is there, Frank. The market is there. Mm -hmm. we can, if you are able to domesticate it, produce those things locally, what you'll be doing is that you have increase in uh, uh, employment rates, which on the other hand contributes to the output that you give. That will give self-sufficiency to the things that we have. Right. And when we are out of that, you'll be able to push to neighboring countries. Imagine that we are actually processing or refining uh, our crude oil and we are producing petrol. You have the likes of uh, West African countries around us who buy fuel from where we are buying fuel right. from to buy from us locally. And that would definitely contribute to our bottom line. So it's enough for government to go back to the drawing board do what is needful, make sure that an average Nigeria, we are more productive than import dependent. And more so, we have a, a particular sector that is booming now, that is fintech. Mm. How much of it are they actually putting infrastructure in place to make sure that uh, internet facilities, the bedrock, the backbone that some of these fintechs rely on, are out there to have a top-notch connectivity that will enhance, you know, the, the deliverable of some of these guys in FinTech. If some of these things are put in place, Mike, there is no place like Nigeria. I, I think keep we, saying I it. think we need to leave it there. Uh, Mr. Olusha Sonkwade is now the uh, newly elected 35th chairman of Ikeja District Society of ICANN. Uh, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for we having me this you. morning.